Here we're going to be looking at partnership special allocation procedures and we're going to be looking at the profit and loss ratio usage here and how we can use that for allocating uh, profit and loss for a partnership. Now a partnership profit and loss agreement may include special provisions to, for handling items that represent one here collections of prior years income or two here current period non-operating gains or losses and for our example we'll be allocating income here from the sale of an appreciated property based on the relevant current and prior periods using the appropriate profit and loss ratio for the applicable period in this case. It's more equitable to base the allocation on the period in which the profit and loss ratio applies. So let's go and look at our example here. We're going to have partner A, partner B, and partner C. And what we're going to do is we're going to sell some property here and there's going to be a gain on this property and it's going to have to be allocated here to partner A, partner B, and partner C. And we're going to look for an equitable, me equitable method here of allocating this uh, uh, gain on the sale of property here. So let's look at our example here. We have property with a basis of $1 million and it was held for three years and sold for $1.36 million. So we have a gain on this property of $360,000 and just say we receive cash for it here and leaving all the taxes out and everything we're just going to allocate this gain here of $360,000 between our partners A, B, and C here. So what we do is we use a profit ratio in this case here for allocating this uh, gain here or this profit on the sale of the property here. And what we're going to be looking at here is this profit ratio here for year one, two, and three. Since this property here was uh, purchased here in year one and was sold here in year three. And for our example here the profit ratio for our partners had changed each year. For whatever reason, it's changed. And uh, for the first year here, it was uh, partner A would receive one part, uh, partner B one part, and partner C here two parts. So the ratio was one to one to two. And then for the second year, we had a change here from two to one to two. And then uh, the third year here, uh, the ratio was 2 to 2 to 2. And what I'm going to do here is just, if you don't understand how these profit ratios work here, uh, for our example here, the annual depreciation here, we had 80,000 for the first year, 100,000 for the second year, and 180,000 for the third year for the appreciation of this property, property here. And we had a total appreciation of $360,000. So just uh, calculating our profit ratio allocation here, 80,000 here, uh, divided by, in this case, 1 plus 1 plus 2, four parts, gives us a $20,000 per uh, part here. And then for the next ratio, 2 to 1 to 2, you got five parts here. So, And then we had a $100,000 appreciation for the year. So take 100,000 divided by 5. Again, we get 20,000 per part for allocation. And then for the third year, we had two to six parts here, 180,000 in uh, depreciation appreciation for the year. So 180 divided by 6 gives us $30,000 per part here. So what I'm going to contend here is that rather than use the current period ratio, uh, it's more equitable to use the ratios that existed during the period here. So had we uh, based it strictly on year 3 here, we would have a ratio 2 to 2 to 2 here, or it would be divided evenly, this uh, appreciation here, this gain of 360,000 here would be divided three ways here, or 120,000 each. So each partner, uh, if we use the uh, uh, third year or the year of the sale of this property, would, would have received here $120,000. So A would have received 120,000, B 120,000, and C 120,000. But if we go to our profit ratio allocation for each year, uh, based on our ratio here for year one, Partner A would have got uh, 20,000, B 20,000, and C 40,000. And then for year two, it would have been 40,000 here uh, for A, 20,000 for B, 40,000 here for C, and so on. Same here for year three. Of course, here it was divided uh, evenly here, two to two to two. So you got 60,000 for A, 60,000 for B, 60,000 for C. Now, by using our appreciation um, profit ratios for each year here, we allocated our income more even or more justly here, since our uh, profit ratio had changed each year here. So the the uh, partner had a different interest 
in this uh, property each year. So it had changed here. So just summing our uh, appreciation here that we assigned to uh, partner A would have been 120,000 for the total, B 100,000, and C 140,000. So you can see that had we used the uh, third year uh, profit ratio uh, allocation here, it would have been 120,000 for each of the partners. But by using each of the year's profit ratio here, we divided up this allocation uh, more fairly in this case, 120,000 to A, 100,000 to B, and 140,000 to C. So if we go up to our uh, allocation here for the sale of property, of course, uh, again, all I'm showing here is that partner A would have been assigned 120,000, B, 100,000, and C, 140,000 for a total uh, gain or appreciation or gain here that we recognize for the sale of $360,000. Okay, to make one last point here using our profit ratio here that was uh, defined here in the partnership agreement here. And what we looked at here was just the appreciation of property here how, and how we assigned it here based on the change in our profit ratio for each of the years here that that property was held. Now um, the point is here if we had a loss or some other type of gain and we had to trace it back uh, say into some previous year here it would be uh, good to go back to our partnership agreement and a change or adjust their accounting records here uh, for that loss or any other gain or loss here that would be accounted for in some previous year by using the profit ratio defined for that period here. Now there's a lot of accounting standards that uh, uh, require certain adjustments and that and you have to follow certain rules but my only point here is that uh, for any gains or losses or other distribution of uh, income it would be equitable to go back and use the, whatever year we're looking at here where that gain or loss or that distribution occurred.